thank you ever so much for the introduction and thank you ever so much for all of you for coming back to see me today. Um, it's been, I guess, a long conference, three days, so you've done exceptionally well to stay zoomed in, so to speak, for the entirety. Um, so I very much hope that it's a good closing to the conference. And I think it's quite apt because you've created a, a great APAC community um, through Instagram, through Twitter, through the live sessions. And that's what we're looking at, this idea of building that online community within our classrooms. Because I think it's something that does maybe get, not forgotten about per se, but it's maybe not at the top of teachers' agendas because they're so worried about getting the classes done, getting students involved, um, and having successful online lessons. But really, the kind of secret behind all of that is the idea of the online classroom community. And we're gonna sort of start off by looking at the importance of it, why is it so important? And then we're gonna look at how we can facilitate it asynchronously, um, so outside of the classroom. Uh, because I think Joan's session yesterday afternoon looked a lot, a, lot, a lot at how we can do it within the classroom. Um, but I want to look at how we can do it outside of the classroom, although I will stay, still make some references to internal live lesson community building. And I just want to start with a little poll. Okay, so this session will be interactive. You will be doing lots of different activities for me using your annotation tools, using the chat box as well. And I want to start with this question. In a word, how has working remotely made you feel? Now, I would like you to use your uh, annotation tools to write on the screen for me. Um, you can write in the chat box if you want, but really I want it all over the screen. So get your annotation tools out, click on the text button and write down words that you think describe how you have felt about teaching online. For example, exhausted, I've written up there for you. Okay, challenging, tiring, challenging, worried, stressing, comfortable, alone, overwhelmed, exhausted, challenging. What's the office coming out? Always. Quite a few sort of marks on the screen. Annoyed, stressed, overwhelmed. There's one word I'm waiting to come up that hasn't come. Disconnected, alone. There we go. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Frustrated, made me use my creativity. Good, Nuria, I like that. Yes, it does make you be more creative. Lonely, uneasy. Okay, perfect. So I think this idea of disconnection, loneliness comes through tremendously. The, kind of the word I was looking for was isolation or isolated. Um, because it does, we're not, it's such an alien environment for us, even though it's something we do a lot socially, to not have that day-to-day -day contact with our learners is, is really strange. We're not just our learners, but with our colleagues, we feel isolated. And if we're feeling isolated, for sure, our students are feeling that, uh, especially if they're kind of teenage, young adult learners, they are going to feel really isolated, but they cannot have that social interaction that they crave, that they desire. Which means, of course, that the need for building an online community is really, really important. Uh, Sonia, can you take a screen grab of this screen for me very quickly? Thank you. Um, so, I'm going to clear those drawings before we move to the next slide. So, yeah, building this sense of community is vitally important to having a successful online course because it's vital to building relationships. But beyond that, why do you think building that sense of community in the online classroom is so, so important? So for this one, just in the chat box, can you answer that question? Why is it, in your view, in your opinion, so important to build an online community? So, Draw on the experiences you've had so far, teaching online. Okay, so it creates that feel of connection. Engage, yeah, I think that's really important, uh, Gabrielle, engagement. You cannot 
get your students engaged if they don't feel part of something bigger. They need to feel safe. They need to feel comfortable. They need to be in an environment where they feel that they can contribute. Good, yeah, sense of community, collaboration, good, Rubio. Sense of belonging, connections, exactly, all of these things. Here's a quote I've got from Pankowski Barak from their, their work, Best Practices for Teaching with Emerging Technologies. When you reflect on your college classes or any lessons you had, the ones that you remember most were the ones that involved relationships. They were the ones that made you feel connected in some way to the instructor, and you felt like you were part of a group, part of something more. And that's what exactly, that's exactly what is important in an online class. We've got to have that sense of involvement because, as you've all pointed out, learning online is a very lonely process, or at least can be a very lonely process. You sit at your computer, working in quarantine in a digital island, unaware of your peers, unaware of the struggles that they have. You don't have those opportunities for the pre-class, the post-class chats that you would normally have with your learners. But actually what's really important here to point out, and the research proves this, is that having this sense of community, it absolutely does improve engagement. It improves motivation and as a result, it improves achievement. Therefore, it's something which we need to consider more deeply, the sense of building a community. Um, other studies show that students fared better when they had a social presence in an online community. And for me, at the heart of all of that is this idea of rapport, knowing each other. Because the more you know about each other, the more those friendships are going to blossom. Very simply, the more you know about somebody, the more comfortable you are working with them. And I have to say, this is something that we do very naturally in the face-to-face -face classroom. But for whatever reason, as soon as we go to online, we feel all kinds of other pressures being brought in. Maybe we don't feel that we have time to spend chatting, getting to know each other, because time is shorter, time is more precious. But actually, I would suggest we do need to spend more time on that, because it will facilitate the learning that comes. So of course, you know, doing lots of getting to know you type activities works, lots of pair work, lots of collaborative group work. Those are things which we all need to do. Joan yesterday, yesterday talked about humanizing the classroom as much as possible. And, and that's super, super important. And we'll look at another way in a moment of doing that. Um, I, I just wanna start with a, sort of a couple of ideas that I kind of picked up right at the beginning of this whole situation. And I discovered this, this website called, hang on, what's it called? Called brightfulme.play. And basically there's the icebreaker games. And what I decided to do, I thought I'd just use these at the beginning of every lesson. So the first two, three, maybe four or five minutes of a lesson, I would do these icebreaker games so that people would get to know each other as much as possible. So they would be as comfortable with each other as possible. Um, and on the website, there's lots of different games. But I wanna look at two in particular, which I enjoy doing with my students. And we're gonna do this with you. Um, and it's called, the first one we're gonna look at is called Would You Rather. So for this one, you're gonna need your annotation tools, okay? And very simple, I'm gonna give you two scenarios and you need to decide which one you would rather have or rather do, okay? So using your stamp tools, okay? That's probably the best one to use here. Maybe the tick or the star. Or the love. So here's the first one for you. Please do this on the screen, not in the chat. So, would you rather have amazingly fast typing or texting speed or the ability to read ridiculously fast? I'm going to start it off. Okay, Carla says typing, Anna says typing, Julia says typing, Pasta says typing, Geordie says reading, Beatrice says reading. 
Sonia says reading. Chris says reading. Okay. It looks like it's a fairly even split at the moment. At the moment. Interesting. Okay, let's do another one. And of course, you know, the follow up to this would be then, okay, you put stupid in the group and you get them to explain why. But it's kind of a little fairly sort of silly question, really. Um, but you get to get students to explain why and you know more about them. Alicia, the annotation tools are at the top of the screen under view options. So you click on view options at the top, you get a drop down menu, and there's annotate there. Again, okay, clear all those. Let's do another one. So the next one for you is this. Uh, there we go. Would you rather travel the world for a year on a shoestring budget or stay in one country for a year but live in luxury? I should say, I'm doing this in a slightly different way to which you do it online because, oh, hang on, let's go back. Okay, I think we've got a clear winner there. Travel the world for a year on a shoestring budget. I would definitely agree with you on that. I would definitely be doing this one. And again, you put students in groups, why? Why did you choose this one? And it's just little things like that, you get to learn more about each other. Iago, I'm not gonna give you control of my screen, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna clear all the drawings. Okay, next one. We're gonna do a slightly different question. The other kind of question you can do is question of the day. And this is something I would put in the chat box for my learners when they arrive early. And I put it in there and I get them to think about it before pairing them off or putting them into small groups just to discuss that question. So the question I want you guys to answer very quickly, just again on the screen or in the chat box, up to you, is this one. In what period of history would you want to spend a year? So for example, for me, I would like to spend a year in ancient Greece, in ancient Athens particularly, around 500 BC, because I'm fascinated with this period of history. It's what I studied at university, and so I've got quite a, not, not quite a lot of knowledge there. I like to you know, meet Aristotle, Plato, all of these great thinkers. So if just on, the, on there, if you'd write down who or when you would like to visit, like Middle Age, says Carla, French Revolution, so you can use the text box just to write. So ancient Athens, for example. Okay, Middle Age, Romans, 1950s. Interesting. Who's that? What was so great about the 1950s, Amaya? I wonder. The 60s, ancient, okay, ancient Egypt. Okay, Svetlana, I might say, okay, well, explain why ancient Egypt is such a fascinating period for you. And it just, you get to know more about each other. You know, okay, let's do one more example. I'll clear all the drawings. And the next question, and this, I love this question. It's such a strange one, is this. What odd smell do you really enjoy? You have to think about that one, maybe. For me, the odd smell I kind of enjoy is that smell of cut grass, um, especially after it's rained. Ooh, some of this is Sharpies, petrol, hydrogel smell, gasoline, rain, wet dog. <laughs> Ooh, that's a great one. I would love to ask Rosa Maria, what is it about the smell of wet dog that you really enjoy? Um, you don't have to answer that, Rosa, it's okay. Um, the shoe repair shop, says Belen. Wow, strong cheese, says Ramon. Fresh laundry. That's quite a nice smell, I think, Vanessa. Um, Fried onion, says Lourdes. Uh, Any other strange ones there? Cut grass, glue. You gotta be careful with the glue, Rubio. Um, bleach, says Michael. Okay, you get the idea. Um, and all of a sudden, I've, I've learned a huge amount more about you. Um, and you maybe learned a bit about me as well. It, it just makes us feel more comfortable in each other's company. Okay, thank you so much for doing that for me. Um, Sonia, I don't, don't know if you want to screen grab that for me. That'd be great. Um, all right, let's clear all those drawings. So, okay, we've done it a slightly different way in which we're doing class because we've got over 100 people here. But in class, you just put them together in groups to discuss why. Um, and it creates great discussion. I mean, like they learn little bits about each other. 
And all of this comes back to what Joan was talking about yesterday in being human in the classroom. You know, learning begins with humanizing the instructor. It's important for instructors to present themselves as real people, not just a face on the screen. So a lot of what Joan talked about yesterday was great because you could, she was using things from in her house, the realia, tools of the house, etc. You get to know each other. The more you get to know each other, the more comfortable you feel. And for me, a really, really important part of that is the use of the camera. Now, I know that this is a contentious thing for some people because students don't like having their cameras on. But we have to think about the benefits of having it on. You know, it's not nice talking to somebody when you can't see them or rather listening to somebody when you can't, when you can hear them but not see them. So let's just do a quick experiment here. I'm gonna stop my video, but I'm gonna carry on talking. And I want you to type in the chat box how this makes you feel. So as I'm talking, think about the emotions that you're feeling while I'm presenting to you, talking to you. So yeah, distance, weird, lost, Cecilia. Weird and distance as Alicia, distant, weird. Sergio, scared as Angel. Cold, an orphan. Oh, Judith, don't be an orphan. Um, okay, it's like a phone conversation. Okay, having already seen you, it helps. Ignored, are you a bot? Exactly, you, you kind of get the idea. So let me just restart myself, I'm back, hi. Um, it's so important to be able to see the people in your class and for them to be able to see you. Now, I understand that some students don't like showing themselves, I get that. But I think there needs to be certain rules that we apply within the classroom. And that for me, the why I generally encourage is that at the beginning of the lesson, when we're on gallery view, we all have our cameras on. And then at the end of the lesson, we go back to gallery view. And by gallery view, I mean this kind of view, uh, where we can see everybody at the beginning of the lesson and at the end of the lesson. And maybe during the session, I have one opportunity where we're all together as a gallery. The only other rule I'd have for cameras on is when students are working together in breakout rooms. Of course, Adelaide, there's gonna be issues of internet connection. I, I get that. Um, but where possible, it's something we need to encourage. Because otherwise, you're gonna be working with people who you've never seen. And that is just strange, a really strange thing. So just in the interest of this, okay, just as an experiment, and I know it might not happen perfectly, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna put it onto gallery view. And what I would like is for everybody just to turn their cameras on and to sort of say hi, to wave to everybody. Um, and I think gallery, there we go. I can't, there we go, hi everybody, Look, there we go. And all of a sudden we feel part of something. And I've got six pages of people. That's amazing. Thank you for turning your cameras on. I'm not sure if you can, yeah, you should be able to see each other. Okay, some of you still got cameras off, that's okay. But, all of a sudden, we feel part of something, right? We feel part of this wonderful community that the organizers from APAC have created. And for me, it, it means so much more because now I know who I'm talking to, not just, you know, blank screens, so to speak. So thank you for that. So let me just come back to that. So, you know, it is something we need to encourage as much as possible. Yes, I appreciate not everyone can do it or wants to do it for various issues, but it just makes you feel part of something. It humanizes the classroom. Okay, so that's enough of, of that. Let's focus on, on the main topic here, and that is of how we can do it outside of the classroom. Because like I said, I think inside the classroom, we're, we're naturally quite good at it. We, you know, we do pair work, we do group work, we have the cameras on, etc. But actually, what we can do outside of the classroom can also have a really big impression and really help to build this idea of community as much as possible. And, and it starts at the beginning. 
it all starts with making a good first impression. So the way this side was, I, I kind of, I was running a course and thought, okay, I want to build this sense of community. How am I going to do it? So I ended up emailing all of my students who were going to be on the course and I introduced myself. I told them things about me and I asked them to email me back telling me some things about them, their expectations for the course, et cetera, et cetera. Just so that we could get to know each other a little bit more. So that when they arrived for the class, they knew who I was and they knew who I, uh, I knew who they were and they knew who I was. And that was fine. But then I realized, well, you know, they're gonna have some interactions with me, but really their main interactions are gonna be with other people. So for the next course I ran, I started by sending them a link to a Padlet, um, which I just called um, the, the, the name of the class. Um, and it was much like this one. So I've called this one The Secret Life of Me. And in it, I, I asked people to introduce themselves and to share three interesting facts or three things that their colleagues, their friends probably didn't know about them. And then I shared the link with everybody and they all contributed to the Padlet. So they could all read about each other in their class, who all the other students were gonna be. They could ask questions, because you turn the, the chat or the, sort of the annotations, the question section on, and you kind of create a mini discussion so that when they arrived for class, for that very first class, they already had a sense of who the other people in their class would be. Now, the great thing about Padlet, as many of you will know, is that of course you can post photos, you can type what text you can, want, but you can also record yourselves, add links, share things, draw, add places. You can add lots and lots of different types of information. And like I say, it just gives them that sense, even before the course has start, that they belong to something bigger. That they are not alone. So what I would like you to do right now, this is a live Padlet. I would like you to navigate to this Padlet for me. I'm going to put the chat the, the link in the chat box oh hang on okay so the link is in the chat box i would like you to navigate to it using the link or using the qr code and as the instructions say there i would like you to share three things about yourself that your colleagues or that you people you work with don't know about you or probably don't know about you so for example with me i have a twin brother who is a chef uh, who lives in Singapore, um, and he is in fact five and a half minutes older than me, which I'm never allowed to forget, of course. Uh, I love watching, playing and reading about cricket because, hey, I'm English. And I have traveled to more than 50 different countries. So I'm going to just share my other screen, which is my Padlet screen, and I'm hopefully going to see all of you guys putting your comments in. Okay, here we go, look at that. Okay, so if you're trying one or two things, okay, you can see it there, look at that, beautiful. Okay, now, if you haven't got an account, please make sure you put your name at the top as well, if you can, rather than just being anonymous. Oh, so Marta has a twin sister who lives in the US, nice. Another twin out there, great to see. Wow, lots of things coming through here. Of course, we're kind of doing this live, but this is, like I say, this is something you do outside of class time. But just as an example, and for, to, to build this app app community, it's good to see. Well, Joanna's got a big, big family, one brother and three sisters. Wow, Carla had a baby just two days before lockdown. That must have been quite challenging in some ways. Um, wow, lots and lots coming through here, thank you. Oh, Lara was in Thailand last year. She had a son. I, I dream of being able to travel again, Lara. Oh, there we go. Judith, she loved cats. You got a picture of, of her with I don't know, some kind of tigery thing. Oh, so many translated films. Interesting. Okay, they, they keep coming, right? Wow. Let's just scroll down a bit. I, oh, Patricia's got a lovely new dog. Oh, what kind of dog? 
Patricia. So of course, what you would then do, you'd read each other's posts and stuff and you'd ask questions. So in that case, I'd say, okay, Patricia, what kind of dog is it? What's the name of your dog? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, Merce, Merce loves bird watching. Okay, so I might ask her, well, how, how long have you been bird watching? What's the most, what's the, your favorite bird to be able to view? Uh, Alba says she loves cheese, so I might ask her, okay, great, what's your favorite cheese though? If you had to choose one cheese, which is your favorite? Lola loves cooking, especially on a Saturday, so I, hopefully I'm not stopping you cooking. I love this one. Someone used to fly small planes when they lived in the US. Amazing. I can get by in five languages. So I say, okay, which, are they, which five languages are they? So you build a conversation, you build knowledge, and everyone feels part of something bigger. Um, I'm going to leave this live. You can ask each other questions post-session. It will be live for the next week or so. We'll call it our little AP, uh, APAC community. Okay, let's come back to the talk. Uh, there we go. Okay. So that was fun, right? You enjoyed that. Um, we learn more about each other. It builds community. And this all comes back to the idea of maybe the idea of a class blog. Um, actually, you know, I've done it as a Padlet there, but of course there are lots of other Padlets that, or other platforms that you can use um, to build that sense of community. And really, this for me is kind of the, the heart of it. Um, because the teacher can, of course, share information. Yes, you can share homework assignments, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just a great place that is organized by the teacher where students can communicate with each other in a more formal way, which for me is far better than using things like WhatsApp or Facebook or Instagram groups, because it's very much focused on what you want to share with your class. So sharing information about themselves, their interests, et cetera, building that closer relationship. And of course, practicing their English at the same time. So, you know, you, you can do this on lots of different systems. It might be a Moodle, it might be Blackboard, it might be Edmodo. I mean, there's lots of different ones out there that can be used. And they all facilitate this process. And I should say that the, the idea of community building, it is a process. It isn't just you do one thing, hey presto, we have a community. It is a process, it's continually doing these kind of activities where students get to know each other, where they work together as much as possible. Um, but just going back to this idea of, of these kind of platforms, um, I found a really nice article on the Teaching English website from a teacher called Nelson Adito and his experiences of using a platform like this. In this particular case, it was Edmodo and how students reacted to it. Okay, Laura, you mentioned a thing about using apps during class when they're on their phone. This is outside of class time, okay? Yes, we just did that activity in class, so to speak, but normally you do it outside of class time. So, yeah, obviously with these platforms as well, Patricia, you're right. You can, of course, send messages. They can message each other. Um, but just going back to Nelson Adito. So in this article, he talks about Edmodo and how he gave his students a questionnaire about what they liked. And this was some of their replies. It's a good way to learn English with technology. It's a dynamic way of learning English. It's a different way of working and communicating with classmates. When asked what they most liked, they talked to other people in the class. It's easy to use and interesting. And for me, this one's really important. They discovered a social network to learn in English. Uh, they all agreed that Edmodo motivated them more this year. But like I said, the, the key point there really is that idea of communication, social networks. They felt part of something. They were all in the same boat and it gave them that space where they could practice outside of class time, should they so wish. But of course, you know, you can't just expect students to communicate with each other um, without some kind of task. So of course there is teacher involvement with the kind of activities you want them to get involved in, kind of information you want them to share. So I started something called my favorite blogs. Um, and every week I would give my colleagues or my students a new Padlet with a different theme in it. So it could be 
my favorite film, my favorite book, my favorite smell, my favorite band, my favorite website, my favorite restaurant, my favorite whatever. The list is endless. But what it does, it means you get to share your favorite thing, which is very easy to talk about, to speak about, because it's your favorite thing. It also gives them writing practice because they have to write about their favorite book, website, whatever. It gives reading practice to the other students because they're reading each other's posts. And of course, it's giving them the opportunity to find out more about each other, to ask questions, to build relationships. And from a teacher's perspective, this is great because it's quite an informal task, but it gives you great evidence of, uh, of their progress uh, and you can use it for formative assessment as well. You know, you're not picking up on lots of grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes, et cetera, but you know, it might be something you wanna pick up on and use in class should you so wish. So for example, here's one that I did with my colleagues on their favorite TV shows. Uh, and this was really revealing for me because I learned a lot about my colleagues or, or at least I was surprised by a lot of my colleagues about the TV shows that they enjoyed most. It gave me kind of a different viewpoint on them. But if you want to, of course you can link it to whatever you are studying in the book. So for this one, this was a, a lesson I'd done on the soundtrack of our lives. It's actually taken from Outcomes uh, Intermediate. And for me, the logical follow-up to that was to get students to share their own playlists. Um, what songs, what albums did they want to, you know, what were their favorite albums, etc. So it's really easy to link to lessons as well. And at the same time, learn more about each other, get recommendations. You know, it could be with travel and transport. It could be anything really, any topic in the book, you can link to some kind of out of class Padlet activity. Um, one of my favorite ones to do is actually this travel one because you've got these interactive maps in Padlet where you can just pin your, your favorite holiday destination. Okay, we're not gonna do this one live, but if you want to, you can do, okay? There is a live Padlet, there's a QR code for it. If you wanna add it in later to share your favorite holiday, please do. Um, let me see if I can share the, uh, I'm not sure I can actually. Let me share the actual link for it as well. Bear with me a second. Okay. Think about the chat box there. Okay. That's the chat if you wanna add in your favorite holiday. Um, and I see there's a question. I'm gonna come back to that question at the end, I think, uh, who's it from? Javier, okay. Um, so I'll come back to it at the end if I've got time, okay. Um, another example, you know, this one's all about family, friends, who's the guy in the middle, describing photographs, essentially. Again, you know, you create a Padlet, you get them to talk about their family. And like I say, you can get them to record it orally, so you've got an oral recording, or you get them to write it. But they listen to each other, they read each other, they learn about those lives, which they're not getting the time in class to do. Because remember, when they're in school, they're talking to each other before class and outside of class, in the cafeteria, in the corridors, learning about each other. That in the online environment is all gone, but it's vital for them to get to know each other. So we have to instigate it in a more kind of formal way through this kind of activity. And taking that on a stage further, I think it's kind of links into this idea of incorporating dynamic online discussions. And I think, as we all know, discussions are a really, really important part of education, um, of using practicing English. But many times there are lots of challenges. Students don't know what to say. They don't come prepared for that conversation. So therefore discussions may be unbalanced. And in fact, research suggests that 15% of students dominate more than 50% of the conversation. Now that might be for knowledge reasons, it might be for language reasons. But what happens is that some students don't speak very much at all and others talk too much. So by moving these discussions online, 
it actually gives them more accountability and more opportunities to contribute. And there's some research from the University of Oregon that, that suggests that online educators who use discussion boards successfully estimate that their interaction with students can be as much as three times the interaction with face-to-face -face students. And that peer-to-peer -peer interaction is even many times more than that. So clearly there are benefits to move those kind of in-class discussions outside of class. Now it might be that we do that before the lesson to prepare them, or it might be that it's a discussion that we start in class in smaller groups or in pairs, and then we move outside of class afterwards to continue so that they can share their ideas with everybody. And there are many sort of benefits to this as well, I should say. Of course, they foster that sense of community because you're working together as a whole class, sharing opinions, thoughts, et cetera. Ceci, I'll answer that question later. Um, number two, they can continue, like I said, they continue in-class discussions outside of normal class time or do them in preparation for a class. It allows all students to participate. And I think that's the key thing here. We, we, I gave you that statistic just now about an in-class discussion is dominated by a small number of the students. Here, everyone can involve themselves because it gives them time to reflect on their thoughts before contributing. So they don't feel that kind of pressure or maybe saying something wrong. Um, allows students to work on their reply and check for grammar and spelling beforehand. So it helps those students who may be a little bit more sensitive or shy to speak because they want to get it exactly right. The online discussion boards allow them to do that. Um, allow students to practice their writing skills in a more informal way. And they offer peer learning opportunities, um, which takes some of the workload off the teacher. So they're a really great thing to do. And many course books, you know, all course books have great discussion activities within them that can be moved outside of the classroom, especially when we're teaching online, because we know that classroom time is so short and precious. Maybe we don't have time for a 10, 15 minute discussion activity. So we can streamline it by starting it online or at least finishing it offline. So for example, this is taken from Outcomes Advanced. Um, it's a, a lesson all about the paparazzi. And within that lesson, there's a really good discussion activity, which, you know, it might be quite difficult just to do off the cuff. So in California, they have introduced laws to try to restrict paparazzi. Work on your own and think of reason for and against this idea. Then work in groups and discuss your ideas. Now, while this is exercise six in the, in the, in the lesson, there is no reason why you cannot start that discussion before the lesson. So, you know, in your chosen uh, learning platform, Edmodo, Blackboard, Moodle, whatever it is, you can post that in the discussion board and get students sharing their ideas, working together. Of course, what is absolutely vital to this is that there is teacher involvement as well. You cannot just expect students to do it by themselves. You, as a teacher, need to ask questions to your learners. So if they've made a statement, ask them why have you said that? What evidence is there for that? Um, share your own views and opinions so that students can respond to you. It might be that you decide to work as you know, the devil's advocate and put something quite controversial on there just to get a reaction and to create that discussion. But what that means is that when they come to class, they've already had time to think and process their thoughts and opinions on this. And then it makes that discussion in class much more streamlined, much more effective. Or equally, you know, like I said, it could be done after class as well. Um, another example, this one's taken from Perspectives Intermediate. Um, it's all about, I love this one. Which of these bad habits annoy you most? Which are the most unacceptable where you live? Um, and, you know, you can have great discussions here, which again, in class, it might take quite a lot of time. Maybe start in class, but continue outside of class. So just really quickly in the chat box, please tell me which for you is the most annoying of these bad habits. Or if you want, use the annotation tools and just tick the one that you think is 
most annoying, for example. Noisy eaters really, really annoy me. For whatever reason, I don't know why, it's really, really bug me. Okay, talking to your mouth full. Yeah, okay, lots of, lots of agreement with noisy eaters. Talking about your healthy diet all the time. Okay, great. And again, again, okay, if, if we're doing this within a discussion board, okay, I appreciate we're doing it differently now, uh, but in a discussion board, you know, I would get you to explain why. Why does being a noisy eater really annoy you? What is it about talking with your mouth that you find so unacceptable, et cetera, et cetera? Um, and, you know, you've got a question two there as well. Are there any other bad habits that annoy you? So students have their own ideas. They put them in and explain why. So it just develops it more within the class time environment. Okay, let's clear those annotations. Okay, okay. Let's move on so we don't run out of time too much. Oh, not showing the right screen. Good. Okay. Um, so yeah, discussion boards. You know, they might like look like this within these are things from, from Blackboard. Okay, moving on. Um, we do another poll here using your annotation tools. So and it's connected to this idea of collaboration outside of the classroom in a more formal way. So do you assign homework that requires students to interact with each other? So we have yes or no. So using your annotation tools, just mark what side of the grid you are. Are you a yes or are you a no? Maybe there, okay. Okay, looking relatively even, maybe a few more no's. And in the chat box, not much. Yes, yeah, sometimes, says Anna. Okay. I mean, it's not something you can do all the time, certainly. Um, but it's something I think you should be thinking about doing maybe more. Because, again, it kind of replicates that time where they might be sat, or they might arrive to class early, and they're working together. Or they might have, you know, or after school, they might go and have a little study group. Um, Mariah says, what about if we use Meet instead of Zoom? Um, I'm not sure kind of that's in relation to. Um, but it doesn't matter how they meet outside of class time, to be honest with you. It could be within their WhatsApp, it could be within Facebook Messenger, it could be through Zoom, whatever they want. As long as they're meeting up outside of class time, that is what is important. And setting collaborative homework can help achieve that massively. Um, let me just clear the screen. Okay. Um, so yeah, setting collaborative homework and projects is, is really important. And again, you know, just looking at your course book, you can see what kind of activities could be set as collaborative homework. So for example, let me just have to check again. Yeah, have you just mentioned there about collaborative co-correction of the homework is something I like encouraging too. Absolutely. That kind of peer assessment, peer teaching. Um, and I kind of touch on that in a, in a moment. Um, so this is taken from Perspectives Intermediate, and these lessons always end with a mini kind of project, a challenge. Now, there is no way you would do this in your online class because it is going to take too long. It's, it's a good 20, 30, even longer type activity. And I think instead of saying, I'm not going to do it at all, you think, okay, this is a great thing to do for my students outside of class. They can arrange themselves, I'll set the groups and they can arrange outside of class to work on this mini project. And then they can present it in class or they can present it through something like Flipgrid where people can watch their presentations, but they are working together in a collaborative way to create something. Another example here from Life, in this particular one, they have to create their own pedicab company, um, design the cab, think of the name, Etc. Etc. Market it. But again, in, it would take too long in class. Even some activities within outcomes. Here, it's they're making a podcast. Again, it's very time consuming, and you think there's no way I'm doing that in class. That's fine. They do it outside of class time in set groups, working together, building that relationship. 
Um, and, and the same for writing. I mean, very rarely will we do a full writing lesson in class because it is time consuming. But what you do, you make the writing a communicative activity or a collaborative activity where they're working through something like Google Docs and they are either, as Javier said, writing their own piece of work and correcting its peer assessing or working together to create a single piece of written work. So they're working together, which I think can be really, really beneficial. Yes, it's not all their own work, but just that process of working with someone can be so beneficial in, in so many different ways, you know, from, from that actual content of the, the piece of writing and building those relationships. Uh, one more example here is just, yeah, again, another kind of project, which is time consuming in the online classroom. Most people I speak to think they can't do projects online because they don't have time. They do outside of class time. Mariah says about Jamboard. Yeah, absolutely. Jamboard's great as well. It's a really cool tool. Um, okay, time is very nearly up. Last thing I want to mention really, really quickly is this idea of social media groups, which, I mean, it depends on the age of your students. Um, for me, you need to be really, really careful using social media groups because really you, the teacher cannot be accountable at all. Um, so from a sort of child protection kind of Point of view it's probably not safe but for adults young adults it might be more advisable but for me it needs to be set up by the students themselves you can arrange them as a class group to have their class facebook group the fast instagram or the fast class whatsapp group but like i said earlier using your learning platform your ed models your moodles that should really be the place to do it but if they want to have a more social time they can use these platforms Okay, so just sum up, sum up really quickly. We can develop that strong online community asynchronously by using class blogs, using collaborative learning spaces, Padlet, Flipgrid, Jamboard, um, using discussion boards, using or setting collaborative homework, that things that cannot be done in class that can be moved outside of class, and encouraging social media groups where and when appropriate. So I just want to finish with a quote um, from a lady called Kate Kane. And she says this, strong communities have members who have shared goals and experiences, who feel empowered to contribute, who trust in one another, and who feel understood and capable as individuals. These attributes enable teamwork, cooperation, a willingness to negotiate, and the ability to draw on one another's skills. And that is what is important. The idea of teamwork, cooperation, trust, feeling empowered to contribute, to work together, because it will create greater engagement, greater motivation, and greater achievement for your classes. So thank you so much once again. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat box. I'm not, not sure how much time we've got. Um, as Sonia said earlier, we have the NGL, National Geographic Learning APAC page. Um, Sonia, if you want to post the link, it's there at the bottom of the page. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your attention and especially thank you for your interaction. And I'm just going to stop sharing again. And I want us all to turn on our cameras so that we can all see each other, see who we've been interacting with. Do I think, well, who was that person? What's that person look like that said that they had just had a baby or had who loved cooking on a Saturday morning, whatever it might be? Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a few minutes for questions and comments. So please go ahead. Yeah, there was a, well, there's a question much earlier from Javier. I'm going to scroll back to the chat to try and find it. Oh, yeah, it was. A long one. Mm. It was a long question, so let me, I'm going to go and find it. Yeah, but me, no, I, uh, there was a comment from somebody about how you can use this with a large, when you have like 150 students, I think they said. Yeah, I mean, using, I mean, the thing, the, the main focus here really was on the, kind of the asynchronous classroom. Now, of course, you know, if you've got a Padlet with 150 people contributing, it is way, way too much. So you need to split it into groups, into manage, manageable chunks. So maybe chunks of, of 25, that many different you know, Padlets, let's say. 
um, mm. which would mean you need to have the paid version of Padlet, but I mean, it's still a useful thing to be able to do. The discussion boards, they're embedded within Moodle's Blackboard, so they can, oh, I love Anna's cat there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think there are ways I love to be a bit more creative with, with how you do that. And I'm still looking for happy question, by the way. Um, I'm not sure if one of the organizers can help me find it. No, I, I had it in a document, but I must have undone uh, I something. Think, hang on, I think I found it. Oh, good. good. I say that. Okay, here we go. I have a question no, about this one from Javier Monge about in model. Okay, so basically, it's, it's about secondary school students who basically are not motivated even to come to class. So, how am I going to make them work together outside of class? I mean, the, the really the, the trick there is, is tapping into what they enjoy doing. So, the themes, the topics, the content has to be sort of engaging for them in the first instance, um, and then finding the right kind of activity that they enjoy. Now, from my experience, is teenagers like kind of working together collaborating so these kind of offline pro or online slash asynchronous projects can be a way of involving them you know using that creativity working together in groups where you know that they might work together better um but i mean every every child is in every student is different but i think you know they're more likely to be involved with anything in class or outside of class if it is of interest to them so relevant themes, topics, and the type of project that might appeal to that type of learning. Um, kind of a short answer. Um, any other questions there do you have? Uh, I copied again Javier's questions. Okay, that's fine. Mm. Well, hopefully I've kind of answered it. It's, it's, it's a tricky yeah. one. I've been lots and lots of depth. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, listen, I think Time is pretty much up. We've got three minutes, right, to the, to the closing session. Um, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. It's amazing to have like more than 130 of you on a Saturday lunchtime. Um, I, I, I take my if I hat, a hat on, I take my hat off and tip it <laughs> to you all. Um, and, you know, fingers crossed, next year I can come to Barcelona and see you all. Because I have to say, it's one of my favourite events, trips of the year. <laughs> in January, so I, I'm missing it tremendously. I have the rain and the wind outside today. Um, so yeah, thank you ever so much. And thanks a lot to you. It's been stay wonderful. Safe, stay well. Yeah. And uh, thanks everybody. Uh, well, I think we can we can maybe stay in this session if that's okay, so we don't have to sort of disconnect and reconnect and so and so. And yeah, is that okay? <laughs> Everybody else in the organization is kind of <laughs> like the uh, Okay, so thanks a lot, Alex. It's a pleasure to have you. I think it's the, the third year in a row with us. So <laughs> we're glad you're glad you're still enjoying it. We're glad you're enjoying it. And we hope we can do many more. Okay, and thanks also to National Geographic again for bringing these two great speakers. You know, like how you connected the two talks and how you now we have it, like the two different points of view on, on the same idea of the need to build community. Okay, and this is something. Thanks for having this organized. So well, I, I should say as well, thank you to the organizers for creating, like I said, creating this wonderful APAC community. I think it's been fantastic. This is, this is yeah, a little, little clap for all the organizers, the right? Talks, right? So the human touch. The despite the, the, the non-human touch, so the, the screen touch, let's just say. Screen, <laughs> screen touch. Indeed, like, indeed. You, you can almost feel it. In mm. any case, um, should we start wrapping this up? I mean, we've been together for over, yeah, three days. <laughs> 12 hours. <laughs> this, this is like a family already. Um, you know, there's a giveaway uh, right at the end of the session. I think it's a good idea not to have to uh, reconnect. Some people are, are not muted, and there's a lot of background noise. And things. Okay. So, in any case, 
the idea was just to bring this to an end in a sort of a high note. You know, there's one giveaway that we already announced. We announced it on the 28th and it's still going on until the 7th of February. And this giveaway is taking place on Instagram. I'm not sure you're following us on Instagram, but in any case, let me give you the address here. It's APAC365 yeah, on Instagram. So if you follow us on Instagram, you'll see you can win a teacher survival kit by um, Dos Profes en Apuros. It's got loads of really cool stuff. So go and check yeah. it out. It's worth it. And the only thing you need to do is just get online. As I said, follow us on Instagram and leave a comment or, or many, as many as you like, actually, um, which session at the, from the ELT convention you enjoy the most and what you learn and why. Uh, okay, Ceci is saying, sorry, there's no attendance registration for Warren's session. You can use the same link. Ceci, it's always the same link. It's, it's always the same Google Forms. You just need to fill in your yeah. details and, and choose the, the session you've attended. So, so people are leaving already, okay. It'd be nice if you bear with us a bit more, but we, we understand you have other stuff to do. Uh, we, we don't, so that's what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, we do, but we'd rather stay <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it's, it's okay. We're, we're, we're two up back anyway. Um, so, so we were, thanks for organizing the convention online. Thank you, Mary Chill. This, this was our main aim. I mean, we understand it's not the same. It's definitely not the same for us either. Um, but I think it was worth making the effort. And although this is different, um, this is what we get right now. So at least, you know, we could see our faces, even if screen to screen, not face to face, actually. Um, hold on, Anna's saying, I could only see three recorded sessions. When will they be available? Well, we're saying we have nothing else to do, but obviously um, I was joking. We actually have um, a family, both of us, and a, a, bit, a bit of a personal life, just a, a tiny smidgen. So um, we're, this is not automatic. We need to uh, edit the videos and put them up. So once we get a minute, maybe we'll take a bit of a break and, and have some lunch even today. And so once we um, get a break, maybe we can get that done. So hopefully they'll be available tomorrow or Monday even. Okay, but um, yeah. So Michael is saying different is not necessarily worse. Totally agree, totally agree. And so, yeah, I mean, just as a reminder, you'll still have a whole week to watch the talks again and get certified. So. Yeah, that's plenty of time. Uh, what's the people are saying? Great. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Great experience. Thanks a million. Oh, thanks a million, Elena. That was, it was great. Yeah, hopefully next year things will be different, but I don't dare to make any predictions because, um, yeah, every, every plan I've made was cancelled, so I'm, I'm not making any plans yet. So, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm not, I'm not, I don't dare to say anything. In any case, um, I told you about the first giveaway. And now about the second giveaway, which takes place here, as a reward for those of you who have stayed with us and bear with us. Um, and the idea is that we'll um, do a Kahoot. We're not very original, but Kahoot is still very competitive and fun in any case. So, um, and we're not going to ask you about the sessions because some of you have not attended all the sessions. You're going to be watching them later. But um, we're going to ask you about general EFL-related common knowledge. So as nerdy as questions. Some nerdy I mean, EFL questions. Yeah, nerdy EFL questions. Even if we don't want to admit it, we're all nerds after all. I mean, being here on a Saturday morning. So um, okay, I'm just saying, miss people and having coffee with colleagues. I yeah yeah. I think this is what a lot of people said. That the break time yeah was great. Um, uh, thank you very much. You did a great job. The challenge was a learning experience in itself. Totally, totally. I think. Um, this was also what we were saying yesterday at Elena's session, that in itself, this was um, a learning curve. I mean, we had to become Zoom experts, which we were by no means at the beginning. And, um, and so, yep, making this work. And I think uh, we, we really appreciate the effort you have made as well to be able to connect to all the sessions, to be able to learn how to navigate the system. So somebody else is saying, thanks for the hard work. Okay, went into this unusual convention. Yeah. We, I, w I think this totally qualifies an unusual convention so challenge was a learning experience yeah if we watch the sessions do we have to fill out the google forms for all or there's a limit um you can you can get certified up to 20 hours yeah yeah 
So yeah, as many as you have watched, 20 hours, yeah? The more feedback you give us, the better, because yeah. it's always good to see if you like the speakers or if you connect with the content in any way. I think maybe without much further ado, we should yeah. start the second giveaway. Yeah. And if you watch <laughs> the video Sora and I made until the end, you'll know that. Oh, OG is ready. <laughs> okay. You know that the, the prize for the second giveaway is, is two books by Dr. David Bueno. Although I was thinking now that Chris Rowland publicized his books also, <laughs> maybe we should do one each. We'll let you choose in any case. We'll buy you. <laughs> <laughs> because we know many of you will probably have some of those already. So yeah, people are saying that the sound is not very good. Could you maybe turn down the volume a little bit? Oh, sorry. I'm, I have my partner's mouse and I keep grabbing it. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> Just a minute. Um, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Is that better now? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Ah, they're saying thank you. Right. Ah, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I think <laughs> technically it worked well. Yeah. Yeah, you, you didn't see the behind the curtain sort of um, theme going on because it, it was actually quite entertaining. But um, but we definitely did have a lot of fun talking to the Zoom people. So, okay. Okay, Josie, another question. So, do we, to get the certified for the attendance, do we have to watch all the sessions? Sorry, I didn't know. No, you watch, you watch as many as you can and we'll certify you for those hours, okay? So on the on the 7th, well, actually on the 8th in the morning, because I'm not going to wait on the 7th to midnight, we'll download the, the spreadsheet with all your answers and we'll see how many sessions you've been able to watch or attend live, okay? Including the capsules, including the, the talk by David Bueno and everything, okay? And we'll yeah, just add that. Are also included, Patricia. Yeah. And how do we know how many hours we have watched? Uh, we will calculate that. Okay. <laughs> it's one hour per session. And the, the opening is two hours because it includes David Bueno and our presentation and the John McDowell Awards. So it kind of rounded to two hours. Yeah. It, it okay. rounded and each 20. Hour. Yeah, exactly. And uh, okay, Sandra's so. saying, I, oh, sorry, you're, she's saying it to me, but I love being able to watch other sessions that otherwise would have been impossible. Next year, you can do both things. This was one of the advantages. This was something that you wouldn't be able to have done face to face. So maybe you know, looking at the glass half full, we could think, OK, this is something we, we want. And wrap ups and capaxels. Yes, Patricia, capaxels are also included. Yeah, there are five capaxels that, um, that you can watch and you can also get certified for. Will we receive the certificate by email? Okay, yes, yeah. we'll give it to you. Anyway, I, I feel this is like an agony ant sort of <laughs> section now. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh that's okay. nice to know. Yeah, it's really nice to know. People who are not from Barcelona, obviously, this was a very Barcelona-centered convention. I'm asking you the time they account for. The uh, they, they, we do one hour. They're one hour. Well, they're a bit less than an hour, but we count for one hour. Yeah. So, okay, some people are saying, if it had been live, I would not have been able to come. Great, so that's great. I think capaxels, every two capaxels count as one because they're actually 20 minutes long. Okay, so two capaxels count as one hour. Yeah. But um, exactly. if you have any, yeah. I mean, if you have any such specific questions, maybe you could um, drop us a line here. I can, I can give you our email. I mean, you, which you have already, but hold on. Um, I'm okay. just give it to you and we'll start the giveaway because we might want to have some lunch and not on zoom <laughs> but patricia if you have any very specific questions like this one uh, maybe drop us a line and we'll let you know by email okay yeah yeah but we do 100 i mean it's going to be two and a half hours we're not going to count the minutes because we have bigger fish to fry so we just sort of round it up the time any case i've started to share this is the Kahoot. I cannot see any everybody with this. But bueno, I'll believe you. Vale, I, I think you know. So teach. I think you know yes. how Kahoot works. You go to kahoot.it. Let me put it through the chat just in case. Uh, oh, there you go. Good night. Uh, I can't really see the chat now. Great. Angels, could you 
Ah, here, yeah, sorry. Yep. Sorry, so Kahoot dot, sorry, the spell check is changing. Kahoot dot it. Ah, thank you, Carla. Uh, and um, we're just going to go classic, even if we're not classic people, but still. Game pin, loading game pin, a bit of mystery. There you go, this is the game pin. Uh, let me type it up here. 336-9995. Three, three, six, three, three, six, nine, 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 there you go. Ceci, Aina, Amaya, Misty. I'm just sorry, because I won't be able to play myself. But I bueno, I really love this Kahoot so mystery. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna play just in case I get something wrong and everybody sees it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're, so, wow. David, Mary, Esther, Elena. <laughs> okay, remember, you get one year of free APAC, which is not a lot, really, <laughs> and two books. Okay? And okay, it's not a lot, people. really. Hold on. Well, it's 42 euros. I mean, it's like nothing. I mean, it's, it's, it's more. Yeah, okay, economic. Okay, you mean money. Economically, no. It, I mean, it is a lot. In the, yeah, exactly. It's, it's the, yeah. Anyway, more or less... I hope we have everyone. <laughs> I hope. Let me turn off the music, though. Okay. Oh, I don't hear the music. Thank God for that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not. I'm not sharing the music because I think everybody's a bit annoyed. Thank you. Vale, Vicente Guardiol, Guardiol, sorry, Monse, Pat, Anuska. I think everybody's there. Three, two, oh, one. Sorry. Vamos, que nos okay. vamos. Start. Okay. There you go. So these are nerdy <laughs> EFL related questions. Okay, it's a 10. Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to. There you go, Madiba. To. You see that they're very difficult questions, huh? Really high level. <laughs> they're extremely difficult. We're making it impossible for you to win. <laughs> Okay, so we should quit our jobs and start a quiz show or something. <laughs> oh, totally, totally, I love that. Sure. <laughs> but this is saying it's loading, yes. Somebody's, okay, there you go. 73 were correct. So, somebody's drawing on the screen. Thanks Thanks yeah. for that highlighting. Okay, I also see the, the there's a, the bit left. I can't see it. I don't know why. What bit? Maybe on the... Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Hold on. You can't see the whole Kahoot screen. Okay, hold on. Same happens to me. All right, I, I can't see you. So, wait. Wait. Here. Let me hold screen it. Yeah. Is, that, is that, that better now? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Sorry, cool. so let me put you at the uh, one end of the screen. There you go, next question. So, oh, Alba, Alves number one, Alberto MC, and Lourdes. Vamos. Can, can anybody delete this? Margaret Fuller said, today a teacher, uh, today a reader. Speeder. <laughs> uh, can I erase? Let me... Ah, there you go. Let's erase. Elena, you're a great audience. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, let's see. Yes, and you got it right. Today a reader, tomorrow a leader. I mean, tomorrow a speeder or tomorrow a dealer was a bit more realistic, but there you go. Wait, Jim's going in. Okay, question number three. Well, let's see how this is going. Alberto seeking first place, Celia second place, and Aida third place. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wait, this is getting very exciting. Question number three. Life appears to me too short to be spent in nursing animosity or registering wrongs. This quote belongs to... Which we totally oh. agree with. Because life is too short to be negative. So <laughs> you can see Martin in the back. You can hear Martin in the background. No, that's that's Elena Vercero laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Ma Martin knows the answer. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're teaching our kids from a very early age. There you go. Most uh, most people got their answers right. It was Jane Eyre. Yeah, Jane Eyre. Very current in any case. Okay, let's look at the scoreboard. So Alberto keeps first position. Aida's going up and Alicia coming up third. There you go. Question number four. So George Orwell inspired somebody to write a song. Who was it? Uh, 
Okay, 51 answers, 59 answers. No. 67 answers. Okay, most people got this right. It was David Bowie. Okay, he inspired David Bowie to write the song. And let's see how the scoreboard is. Oh, Aida takes first place. Alicia second. Monse third. The future is female, or, or maybe not. But we'll see. <laughs> Question five out of five. We're, we're hitting half of this. Best classroom management strategy is staring oh, like this guy, basically. <laughs> okay, 59, 67 answers, 69 answers, five seconds to go. Three, two, one. And of course, to be happy and make your students happy as well. Yeah, we're, we're trying to be positive here, so not, not mean. Okay, let's see how the scoreboard change. Alberto's Ooh. coming again from the back, second position. Aida, first position. Alicia keeps her third. So off you go, guys. Question number six. The desire by fans for real life people or fictional characters to oh. be in a romantic relationship is called. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and the image is great. This you'll know if you're, yeah. I mean, if despite being a boomer, you're still there, you're there. Okay, 67 answers. 37 people uh, replied pairing, but it's actually the word, the technical word, or technical word. The term is shipping, yeah, shipping, trying to um, match people. Chipear, yeah. students say chipear. Lourdes chipear. takes first place. Vamos, Lourdes. Aida, a second, and Alberto, third. Let's go, guys. Seven out of ten, only three questions left. Flip classroom means, what does it mean? Oh, that one's easy. Lots of work for a teacher. <laughs> okay, let's see. Seven seconds left. 62 answers. 67 answers. Allowing students to use the language. So they do this stuff at home to then come to class and be able to process it and experiment with it. This was the main focus. Lots of work with teachers most times, not only watching videos at home. That, that's, um, I mean, flip classroom is a bit more than this, hopefully. <laughs> Doing homework in the classroom. Yeah, definitely not. So let's look at the scoreboard. Aida's going first, Celia going second, Anna Bureu is going third. Th this is changing all the time. So it's getting very excited. Only two questions left. Question number eight. A different language is... That's why we're language teachers. Because a different language is... Just that. Well, precisely that, actually. <laughs> this is what David Bueno said in his um, opening talk. Exactly, a different vision of life, and that's why polyglots, polyglots brains are wired differently. Yeah, they have more, or we have more, let's just say, perspectives and um, views to choose from. So, well done, guys. Let's see who's winning now. Ida taking first place, Celia second place, Lourdes third place. Anna is on fire. So let's see, she's coming from the back, fourth place. Two questions Ooh. left. Maya Angelou said, "People will forget what you said or did, but they won't forget." Oh, this, this is, is yeah, my Angelou's quote, really beautiful. I think we've heard this quite a few times. And that's why we're, we're all about emotional um, teaching and learning as well. So 15 seconds, 70 answers. I think most of you are done. 71, a couple of more maybe. Okay, a couple of seconds left. Four seconds left. Three, two, one. And... Exactly. The correct answer is you all, they won't forget how you make them feel. So again, emotions linked to learning. Okay, it's so Celia is number one, seem... Aida is number two, Anna is number three. Sorry, Angels. No, no, it's just funny, all the literary questions. <laughs> you right. get them right. Yeah. <laughs> and so we can see. The very last question, the saying goes, birds of a feather, and this is this year's motto, we said birds of a feather teach together, but the actual, the actual saying goes, birds of a feather drink wine together when the convention finishes, I mean. 
Okay, three seconds, two seconds. Exactly. The saying actually goes, birds of a feather flock together. I really like how drink wine together was actually an option that some people <laughs> chose. Great papers together. Yes, that could be collaborative grading. Or bin watch shows together. Oh, nobody chose that one, but I think a lot of teachers do that too. So, all right. Next year. So let's look at the podium. Let me screenshot that. Third place goes to Lourdes. Second place is for Aida. And last but not oh. least, first place is for <laughs> Mr. Elia. There you go. So let me screen shoot this. Oh, there were two runners up. Hold on. There were two runners up. Um, I think we could march it a bit more and just give them um, an APAC membership to the second and third as well. I think that cool. would be nice. F feeling generous today? Definitely. I think Miguel. The treasurer has left, so I can probably say this and not get into trouble <laughs> immediately. <laughs> so Aida, Celia and Lourdes, please make sure to get in touch through info at apac365.org to claim your prize. Um, you'll, the three the of you will be getting... Been... Sorry, I think the treasurer oh, is there. there. Oh, no. <laughs> Faint in the distance. No, it was also his idea. <laughs> Yeah, Eoyel Platt is drawing. Thank, thanks so much for that. Very artistic. Oh, and the hearts. Oh, my God, Celia, I love the hearts. <laughs> yes, congratulations, because you've won. So you've not only won one year a pack membership like the other two, but also two books by David Bueno of your choice. Eoyel Platt is going, congrats. Come Yay. Oh, sweet. <laughs> In any case, um, Congrats to the winners, but thank you all. I'm going to stop sharing now. Or, or do you want me to keep sharing? You're, you're all getting very excited with the hearts and stars. And the, <laughs> let, let me screen shoot your creation. Okay. Let me I just did. Oh, yeah. you just did? Okay. Cool. Um, in any case, let, let me stop sharing now. I think that's enough. Um, thanks so much for um, participating, for being here till the end for bearing with the technical problems and not losing your sense of humor or your enthusiasm, which I think is key. Right, Elena? We, we, we made it thanks to this. And um, yeah, we, we don't know about next year. We know nothing about next year, actually, because this year started pretty rocky already. But what we do know is that the spring sessions are still taking place. Obviously, not face to face. We're optimistic, but not that much. Uh, and they'll be on the 10th and 17th of April. So if you're looking forward to some more certified training, uh, do join us. We'll give you more information um, soon-ish. And uh, yeah, I mean, we really hope you enjoyed these three days. If anybody has any other comments to make, um, let, let me look at the chat again. Everybody's, thanks. Sharing is definitely caring. Yes, Merce, we, we, yeah, that, that's, that's yeah. basically our motto. Thanks so much, many thanks. Okay, well, th thank you. I mean, this was basically um, possible also thanks to you because um, we, we yeah. have lots of fun <laughs> on our own. But I mean, if, if you're there, then this makes a bit more sense. So thank you, Apat Ward, thanks, see. Um, yeah. Does anybody want There's to- There's a lot of people who are not visible in the team, like Usora and I are the sort of the face of APAC, but it's also Raquel and <laughs> Esther is also here. Yeah, Mireya, who's- you guys, yeah somewhere and Miguel, who I thought had left, <laughs> but has not. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mireya is not here. Anna is also couldn't make it. Monse, uh, Paki is also Celia was here somewhere before too. <laughs> okay, so there's a whole bunch of us working together. And there's uh, Edward as well, who's in the in the Roses and Sad course. So he's not here today, but it's all a team, a team effort. So Certainly, it's, it's birds freakies of a, of a feather work together. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I think we can let people go and have lunch. And okay, we'll upload the Dorothy videos. Said, you deserve a long break. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but we're not having a break. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not having a break just now. Um, in any case, th thank you very much. And um, yeah, see you in a couple of months at the spring sessions or hopefully next year. Somewhere exactly. over the rainbow. <laughs> exactly.